to say that the Pentecost, 50 days following the uh, resurrection of Jesus from the dead and 10 days after his ascension back into heaven, as being the birth of the Christian church, really brings confusion by misunderstanding that the Christian church is birthed in Eden, in the garden. Adam and Eve are the very first Christians. We hear that word that God speaks to the serpent as he condemns the devil for what he has done in leading first Eve and then Adam to succumb to his temptations and to fall into disobedience to God. And we hear as God is pronouncing the curse against the serpent, the wondrous news that one day the seed of the woman who would be aligned against the devil and his seed to bring victory to God's fallen creatures, man and woman. It's the proclamation of the gospel. And particularly when we hear the seed of the woman, we see throughout the rest of the Old Testament scriptures as it talks about the continuation of the bloodline that's going to lead to this wondrous birth of this wondrous Savior. It's always the seed of the man, the seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac, the seed of Jacob, the seed of Israel. The seed of David. The seed of the woman proclaims a virgin conception and virgin birth, whom we know to be the birth of the Christ, Jesus, the very Son of God, the Son of the Virgin Mary. And that in itself tells us that Adam and Eve believe in the very same God that we do. First and foremost, there is only one God. But in this, they believe in the same Christ that Christians on the day of Pentecost, as well as Christians to this very day, believe. Their faith is a forward-looking faith in that the Christ had not come into the world to accomplish all things necessary for our salvation. It is for that that God continues to set the stage throughout the course of the Old Testament. But it has to be seen that they are Christians believing the very same promise of God, I will send my Christ to bear your sin, to be your Savior. To be sure that's hidden in the Old Testament because of the marvelous ways in which God speaks in parables as Jesus himself reveals. Martin Luther, in writing about the comparison and relationship between the two testaments of the Holy Scriptures, that the new is in the old concealed, the old is in the new revealed. And in that, he's proclaiming that it's always been the same church. It's hidden in the Old Testament, but it's still nevertheless the same Christian church that is fully revealed in the New Testament era. And the coming of the Holy Spirit in his fullness at Pentecost. Like the old radio man uh, Paul Harvey. Now here's the rest of the story. Now that the Christ had come to accomplish all things needful for mankind's salvation, where he's lived 
that perfect life for us, that he had died the atoning death for us, and that he takes up his life again and rises from the dead so that all who believe in him will likewise rise from the dead, joined to him in faith. The Holy Spirit now can testify to that, that it is a done deal. And so now Christians of this day, again, speak of the same Christ, believe in the same Christ, but for us it's accomplished fact with regard to the time in human history in which that wondrous and momentous event occurred. So while Pentecost is indeed a great celebration and a great festival in the Christian church, it's not the birth of the Christian church. That is given birth when God himself first creates it and institutes it and blesses it. And that is in the Garden of Eden.